Welcome in. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. I'm so glad you're here today. I've got an exciting topic that's near and dear to my heart. I'm a little bit radical about this one, and I really, really want to share the information because I think it's very, very important. But before we get started this morning, I want you to tell me where you're from and what you're doing today. I know we're coming into the end of the week, which I'm happy about. And I want to share with you a couple of things before we get started on a different topic. The first one is, if you haven't seen The Sound of Freedom, this is your sign that you need to go. I ended up seeing The Sound of Freedom the day after it launched. So I was in the theaters on July 5th. And I'll tell you what, if you haven't heard about it or if you haven't seen it yet, it is an absolute must-see film. The topic, of course, is the child trafficking problem that we have worldwide, globally <clears throat> right now. And it is so beautifully done. It is so rich and wonderful and tells a fabulous story. You will leave the theater a changed woman. You really, really will. And the curious thing is, and, and you'll understand this, after I saw the movie, I included it in my Sunday morning email newsletter. If you're not a member of my Sunday morning email newsletter, you need to sign up in the description box down below. The link is down there. I send out full things every Sunday morning. Very short, very sweet, very free. And I had a lady who had got my Sunday morning email newsletter last week where I mentioned the sound of freedom. And she said, how do you talk with people who say, I can't go see it because it's just too upsetting. And you know, that was such a perfect question because I think it's something that all of us are going to wrestle with a little bit. I know for me, it was a very disturbing movie to see, but the epiphany that I had was that my discomfort over the topic and the reality of what's going on on our planet is a drop in the bucket compared to the pain and torture these children are living through every single day. So I don't have the luxury of saying, I don't want to be uncomfortable for an hour and 45 minutes. These children are uncomfortable every minute of every single day. And it is such an important topic right now when we really have momentum. It's based on a true story by Tim Ballard, who was the founder of Operation Underground Railroad. It's beautifully filmed. The script is excellent. It's just a really, really fabulous movie. I had been following Tim for a long time and knew that the conversation around child trafficking was, you know, kind of murmuring in our society. This film is our opportunity to get it front and center and for us to finally solve this problem. Another thing is, is that we might think, oh no, that just goes on in Haiti, that just goes on South America, that just goes on in other places. It's not really a US problem. Nothing could be further from the truth. America, the United States is the number one consumer of child pornography. We're number one. So it's the neighbor down the street, it's the teacher in the school, it's all the people that you would not expect or would be heartbroken to find out. But the fact is, is that we are the number one consumers of this type of material in the world. And we are responsible for that. We have got to come forward, put our weight into this and really bring this to a halt once and for all. These children deserve a better life. Because just imagine if that was your child or your grandchild. So this is your sign, go see Sound of Freedom. In addition, I saw an interview that was on um, Tim Cast IRL last night. Tim Cast IRL. He has a channel here on YouTube, and he had Tim Ballard on last night, the founder and the person the movie is based on, and also the producer of the film. It was one. It was probably the best conversation I've seen on this topic. I know that Tim and Jim Caviezel, the actor that played Tim in the movie, have been really doing the social media rounds. This was probably the best conversation. So that's what I wanted to say about that. We all need to get involved to put a stop to this once and for all. So thank you so much for listening to that. 
Um, it's not, it says, Regina says, yes, it's not about our discomfort, it's about the children. It's so much more horrific than even they can say. And that is so true. In the Houston area, this is from Shelly. I'm in the Houston area and child trafficking is a real problem here. I can't believe this is happening in our world today. There is so much evil in our world. And you know what? There's so much good too. And it's time for us who are on the side of good and are on the side of humanity and on the side of a society that is loving and caring and supportive. We need to step up and take back our world right now. So today we're going to be talking about one of the hot topics in my world, and that is our good health. And we're going to talk about something that I think is keeping us all fat. And I want to tell you from the outset, this is not about a body shaming. I was, I have been fluffy and I was fluffy for a while and I'm getting unfluffied now. <laughs> this is not about body shaming. This is not about saying someone's fat, someone's this. This is a true concern from my heart for our health. And what I noticed, and I know that you're probably noticing it too, but maybe you're just not really seeing it as clearly as maybe I am because I'm just like all over it right now. <clears throat> is that why are we all of a sudden, is everybody overweight? And I know it's not because we have somehow lost our moral compass or we're gluttons or we're this and that. And it's very, very common for us to shame the people in this situation. Well, the fact is, is that our food supply is mostly poison right now. We're being fed things that really aren't good for us while they're marketed to be helpful when they're not. And the topic today is on seed oils and PUFAs, which are polyunsaturated fatty acids. And I really wanted to do a deep dive into this topic because it's so important to me. And oh my gosh, you guys, if you could see the pictures of me from a while ago, <laughs> hi there you would be surprised. And to talk about this topic, I have brought in my good friend and very knowledgeable nutritionist, Connie Rutledge. She has been working with me to get my body back to a healthy place. And why does it take so much more effort today? Because we're filled with toxins today and it's really a lot more difficult and it becomes a little bit of a challenge to uncover what's going on with our bodies. Now, the good news about Connie is she now has a YouTube channel it is over 50 fat blast. It's linked down in the description box down below. Go on over there. You don't have to wait for her to come onto my channel anymore or me to get around to have time to have a conversation with her. You can get in touch with her every day through her channel. She's also on the web at ConnieRutledge.com. The reason I wanted Connie to talk about today is that, you know, I was laying on the couch thinking, seed oils are really evil. I have so many of you say, what are seed oils and why are they bad for you? And I was really figuring out how are we going to do this? So I texted Connie and I said, what do you know about seed oils and poopas? And she texted back quite a bit. And I said, okay, girl, we're on. So we're going to talk about that today. Connie, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and your practice to spend time with us. So happy to have you here. Can you talk to us a little bit about your background and why this is such an important topic for you too? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kimberly. I just love your heart and how you're so passionate about offering great information to your audience. It's it's just so important. And I'm I'm grateful that you are, you know, there so that people that have no idea um, can really learn from your uh, expertise. So my practice, I'm a functional nutritionist. I um, have been in practice for about 15, 16 years. And I got kind of, uh, well, my daughter needed some help medically and she had some issues going on. And I dove in um, headfirst to try and see if nutrition was something that could help. And obviously, yes. It was very important in, in her situation, for sure. Um, my training is different than a dietitian. Um, I'm more holistically based, and I don't have any other parameters with the uh, powers that be, let's say. So, yeah. <laughs> makes it a lot more easy for me to speak freely about mm -hmm. things that are really wrong in our society. And you're right. Um, the fact that we are fluffier and obesity is is uh, you know an epidemic in our in our world right now is a 
often, well, it's due to toxins and systemic um, inflammation that just keeps us fat. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right and on it, the it makes me crazy when people say, oh, it's just these people won't stop eating or they're over eating. It's like, no, no, we did not as a, as a civilization all of a sudden wake up with no moral compass or we're gluttons. This is a creation, in my opinion, of the food industry, the commercial food industry. 100%. 100%. They're putting stuff in our food that is not food. I go in a grocery store, I lose my mind, Connie, because 95% of what's in there isn't food. Exactly. And it's not good for us. And they put flavor enhancers in the food that's not good for you to begin with that makes you want to go back in an addictive manner to keep at it. So if you're fluffy, I was fluffy. You guys have seen the journey that I've been on. I was fluffy. I was not a glutton. I was eating the food that's available to us. And you know what that'll turn you into? Sick and and fat and yeah. feeling really uncomfortable. So we're going to talk about the, one of the greatest offenders in my mind today, seed oils. So let's start from the very beginning. And I know that you know this, Connie knows stuff, complicated stuff that I, you know, so far over my head. I've asked her to talk with stuff for eight because that's what I need. Yeah. So tell us what seed oils are and where did they come from? Okay, so obviously seed oils are from seeds like soybeans, uh, well, olives uh, and canola, you know, there's rape seeds and anything they can get their hands on, cotton seed, and they can, the in industri an industrial processing is, you know, it's horrific. They use, well, so, so you're, to answer your question, Seed oils are oils that come from seeds. Seeds are grown in crops that are commercially sprayed and genetically modified. And you know, all, we you know we've talked about that in the past. Um, and and they're the way that they're processed. They need to use extreme heat. They need to be uh, solvent. Um, Solvents like hexane gas are put in to break down so they can squish every little bit of oil out of, you know, the sludge that they create. And then they have to be deodorized. And, you know, so it's, it's just this toxic sludge that gets produced into what we call a healthy heart oil. It's shelf stable. And I mean, I... <laughs> It's it's really am it, an, an amazing whole process. It's an amazing scam. Seed yeah. oils did not start out as a food. It no, was a no, 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 no. They, they started out in the late 1800s to uh, grease machines. And now they're feeding it to us. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Rockefeller decided that this sludge or this byproduct that they were using as a mechanical lubricant yeah. or, or machinery, he could make more money if he turned it into food. Sure. And now, tell me how they got away with packaging this toxic stuff as heart healthy. Well, again, it was, you know, the, the powers that be greased the, you know, the, the coffers of scientists and basically they they lied about how and i and i honestly do believe well i want to believe let me put it that way that this wasn't 100% malicious yes sure. they wanted to make money and they saw that they could you know change things that you know we used to use lard and you know tallow and suet yeah so all of these animal products to fry and cook with and eat butter um and and then they decided they could make money selling seed oils to for human consumption and they created recipes and cookbooks and they started marketing it 
And then it was plant-based. So, you know, the Ansel Keys whole debacle where he told us and convinced everybody that fat that animal products are bad for us, causing heart disease and plants are, you know, nothing but wonderful. Um, they just manipulated all of the data and, um, you know, convinced the, the powers that be that they, that plant based is heart healthy. Well, yeah. And it's just really deceptive advertising. And I agree with you. I don't think it's it started in a, a malicious way or with bad intent. I think it was maybe, it just seems to get away from us. You know, I can remember when my grandmother, who, bless her heart, that woman worked night and day every single day of her life, 365 days of the year. I can remember sitting on the back porch with my grandmother plucking chickens. Yeah. She always had a garden. Yeah. She was cooking for an entire family, kids and grandkids, all her life. Sure. And I can remember when Crisco came out or um, Bisquick. She was over the moon. Sure. Because that meant for her an extra two hours a week that she she could save time in the kitchen. Convenient. So, yeah, convenient. And I definitely can see how it got how it got started, but then sure. how it got corrupted. Yeah. And here we are now. And I, I think that any consumer, particularly in the U.S., would be hard pressed to walk down any food aisle in the grocery store and not be able to find most of the products containing seed oils. Well, exactly. And, and, and absolute, when you think about it and you, and you get more knowledgeable about it, then yes, when you're, when you're understanding that we want to avoid seed oils, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I want to offer information about why seed oils are inflammatory and, and ho horrible for our health. So fat is an essential nutrient that we need to eat. Our bodies don't make fat. We store fat. <laughs> we store fat very well. Yeah, I do it really well. I yeah, we, we, we all do. <laughs> but we do not. So we need to eat fat. And we've all heard of omega fatty acids, right? The mm -hmm. essential fatty acids. So the omega 3s and the omega 6s and the omega 9s all need to be in balance. And the reason why we need these good fats is because fat encapsulates the cell and our bodies are made of cells and we need to eat healthy fats so that we make healthy cells. And when we eat an abundance of omega-6 and we don't have the right ratio between omega-3s and omega-6s, and that ratio should be one omega-3 to about three to even six omega-6s. Our society today is about one to 40. Oh, so that's what's... Yes. So actually, what does it do to the body? Like once, once those omega-6s or those seed oils get in there, what do they tend to do? And how does it, how does it manifest? Like, what do we see? Okay, what happens is the 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 omega-6 fatty acids from the seed oils are highly damaged and they're free radicals. And they definitely are, that's why the inflammation happens because the, the seed oils, which are bringing in all this omega-6 in our diet, right? And it, it's, it's way out of balance. It's basically, your body's not able to make a healthy cell like a, uh, capsule okay the outer coating and i don't want to get too technical but but that's the 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 you know that's that's the idea that i'm trying to convey our cells need a healthy fat to be a healthy cell right and if that balance is so off i mean it throws so many things off in our body um the an example i use for many of my clients is first grade boys 
they had um, they tested and the violence in in you know in the classroom with with first grade boys was ridiculous. They tested them, and at that time when I was studying, I think their ratios were one to one to twenty four. So the um, the um, they they kind of gave them omega three fatty acids for balancing that all out. And the um, violence just went down to nothing as far as those little boys fighting, you know, being so rambunctious. So it is, think of our society and, and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and think of how people who maybe are not, you know, paying attention to their health and eating fast food on the daily and eating everything from a box uh, because they don't have, you know, the capacity for eating real food mm -hmm. or maybe it's not available. Um, I mean, that makes me sad. And, and I look at, you know, what, what you were talking about with the movie, you know, the, 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 the trafficking and all of the horrific things that are, are a result of our food supply. Honestly, it, there's a correlation there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. When we, okay, so I look at people, and you guys, I'm talking about myself too. I'm not saying it's other people. I'm saying I went through this. And I look back at older pictures of myself, and I just look like if you poked a finger in me, it wouldn't come, you know, it would, it did. I just look puffy. It's like everybody, they, it's not that they look fat. And I, I'd say that very gingerly. Yeah. They look like they've been blown up. Yeah. You know, they just, they don't look vital and fit and their skin is fitting and, you know, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So is it cause you to retain water? It causes you to retain fat? What's, what's happening inside of our bodies that are making this look, the majority of the population, obese? Yes, the, the fact that you don't have a healthy cell wall is structurally degrading. So your body's having to do all this extra work. And when the body is under duress, um, I say, you know, it says circle the wagons, nobody gets out. And <laughs> because it, it's, it's, it needs to figure out how to survive, right? Yeah. So it just hangs on to everything because it doesn't know that it's okay to let go. And and that's when you get, you know, when you, you we've all experienced this, when you get on a really clean diet, it's like magically you feel so different. And mm -hmm. it's it's because the inflammation is leaving your body and then your body has more of, of the good nutrients and the good materials to be able to make the, the cell wall properly in, in addition to all the energy and you know that. So, so yes, the seed oils are absolutely imperative to not have them on board mm -hmm. and eat more real food to be able to have the new nutrition to, so you can, your body can repair. Yeah. Rebuild. So your body's not in this panic mode all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, it's, so, and it's not just your body, it's your brain. Good point. Yeah. It's like yeah. our brain functions as a result of Huge. our nutrition. Yeah. And I know if we don't have certain um, elements on board, we're not able to access the range of emotions that we're capable of. I mean, our brain literally does not function any more efficiently than our body does when we don't have a good diet. Absolutely. Uh, we, we have to have, I mean, it's, we're, we're a package and our brain is what kind of, it, it's the control center. Yeah. So think of, you know, just, just think of how much better you feel yeah. when you're healthy. I know that I feel a lot better. Okay, I just wanted to embarrass Connie for a minute here, and this is off topic. Connie, how old are you? Sixty-two. Lady, look at the, lady, <laughs> look at her arms. <laughs> you are a walking testimony for what you do. I'll tell you what. I'm like looking at. It's like I have I have shoulder and arm. I'm getting better. 
I'm getting better. Yes, you are. It's <laughs> wonderful. But it's like when you see someone who's really healthy, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like that's what we used to look like. You know, that's what we're capable of. So let's talk about okay, we know that seed oils are the devil. Mm-hmm. That's me. I'm I'm being dramatic here. Yeah. They really are though. Where are they? What are they and where are they hidden? I just found out recently that one of the biggest offenders of seed oils is restaurant salad dressing. Yes. So we go in thinking, I'm just going to have this salad. I know. And then we're going to drench it in seed oil, and we think we have this healthy meal, and we didn't. So let's talk about what are the seed oils, where are they hidden, and then let's talk about what we want to use instead. Okay. So seed oils are everything, now, everything fried in a restaurant unfortunately, unless you find duck fat fries. And I say, go for it. <laughs> I mean, I, that. <laughs> that's how that, it, well, I'm going to kind of, um, my family, I was raised um, with A&W, A&W root beer. My, my family business is a Oh, you're kidding. No, okay. no. So I grew up, at, you know, that anyway. And um, I have talked to my brother about why don't you have, you know, be, be a, a beacon and, and fry everything in, in tallow, you know, or, you know, anything that's saturated fat. I said, you know, he just laughed at me because he's not going to, that, that's not going to happen, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if we think about it, when we go back to, the way that our grandparents cooked, it was all, they didn't have the, they didn't have the seed oils. They, they had bacon fat. Bacon fat. Exactly. What I use now. And you know where you get it? Bacon. From bacon. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And they, they didn't have heart disease back then. And we wouldn't be a species without animals. I mean, it, it, we ate red meat. So, you know, I digress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That being said, the seed oils are, yes, the restaurants use the cheap oils. They're stable. They don't go, you know, go bad. They're, they're bad when they go into the restaurant, but they don't, they don't, you know, they, they, they're preserved. Yeah. And that's the point right there. The processing makes them shelf stable so they can sit there for decades exactly you don't want that in your body no 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 no, no. nothing in nature is you know it, decades yeah except honey yeah okay i'll, I'll give you that <laughs> absolutely so um and anything like baked um commercially let, let's be clear uh the the commercial packaged products at the grocery store are shelf stable because of the types of fats that they use. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what we really have to be. And and let's say um, commercial mayonnaise, the margarines, um, all of the, you know, the massive buckets of, of amber colored or yellow colored oils on the shelf, you know, in in the grocery store. All of those are toxic to your body, and they're advertised much differently. Heart yeah. healthy, yeah. yeah, it's heart healthy, and it's you guys. I'm, I'm sorry to say this, it's just a lie. It's and a lie. It's a lie. It's not good for you. And it, the only reason that those oils are on the market is not for your good health. It's for the it's for the good of the pocketbook of those companies. And they're willing to lie and they're willing to make people sick for money, which I think is one of the biggest, is, it, is, is terrible. I mean, if you live your life in a way that you are earning your income based on the damage of other people, that's not a life that any of us should aspire to. No. So unfortunate. All right. So we know that seed oils and, and, and it's, you know, you know, if you go to McDonald's, that oil has been sitting there. It, it, everything is drenched in this oil, you know, from the hamburger everything. bun to everything. fries are cooked. I mean, it's, they're everywhere. 
everywhere. And I understand that when I go out to a restaurant, I am probably going to be exposed to seed oils. I you just, know. I understand that I get that. I try not to eat out that much anymore. I try to eat at home. Although I do eat out, I'm not going to not go, you know, I'm going to order wisely. I do feel like there is going to come a sea change. I hope so. People are going to say no more. I hope so. No more. And companies are going to have to start bringing in oils that are more helpful. I don't see any other alternative. They're going to go out of business because people are no longer going to go to restaurants. And I think the first company that comes out with a seed oil free menu is going to okay. end up being the heroes. Oh yeah. They're going to end up being the heroes. Well, let's talk about the, let's talk about what what we can use for so yes. for, so olive oil and avocado oil and there's been some controversy about avocado oil. But okay, so and and coconut oil um are plant-based oils that are okay to cook in higher heat right mm -hmm. and then any of the saturated fat like the like the the bacon fat and the tallow and you know those things that we were talking about um those are certainly wonderful to fry in and cook in and butter mm -hmm. let's not forget and, and ghee ghee is another thing it's it's interesting um i listened to a lecture on um a, an indian doctor and he was uh you know, saying the, the dangers of, of what happened in India because they all cook in ghee and that's their tradition and they've done it forever and ever and ever. And when they pulled that out and used the seed oils, the heart, uh, heart epidemics, you know, it was undeniable mm -hmm. and obesity and, and just the, the cancers and all of the disease that mm -hmm. happened as a result of not very many years in, you know, how that, because everything is, you know, prepared with a lot of fat, which mm -hmm. is, it's essential. It's wonderful. We need the right fat. We need the right fat. What can someone expect to see with their body or to feel as a result of getting those seed oils out of your diet and incorporating more, more real healthy oils? Great question. Okay, when when you said you're going to go out to dinner, we we all are going to find ourselves at a restaurant for for whatever reason. Um, and yeah, you can you can ask the server, you know, what do they fry this in? And but but for the most part, you know, you're going to get slimed. You know, it's just mm -hmm. it's going to happen. Well, do you go home and you take more cod liver oil or omega three fatty acids? I do because I know I want to balance it. Okay, I I take, if I know I'm going out to a restaurant, I, I take my eye on. Absolutely. Right before I go. It's kind of like, okay, I'm gonna lay down a foundation because yes. I know what they're gonna be. And I don't even bother to ask. I know darn good and well they're not cooking with tallow. Or right, and, and maybe, you know, and the server probably doesn't care, but I feel like if we can speak up a little bit and maybe just start to kind of, make people think maybe that are sit, sitting at the table with us and asking, you know, what, what do you cook your eggs in? And if she says, or he says, you know, you know, oil and then say, would, would you please have them cook my eggs in butter? That I have never thought about that. I wonder if they would. Of course. I mean, well, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can ask, you know, you can ask. Yeah. you can ask and most every restaurant has butter. And, and so something I feel is, is that you can just kind of start to get the word out could be helpful. That being said, we don't, we don't know it's, it's going to change the world, but maybe baby steps, right? Mm -hmm. All right. I forgot the question you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen? What can we expect to see with our okay. bodies and our sense of, and how we feel as a result of getting the seed oils out of our diet? So, so when we become more balanced, like I said, the omega-3 to the omega-6 ratio, when we're avoiding those omega-6s and having more of the omega-3s, then you will notice less inflammation. You will notice the puffy goes away. You'll drop a few pounds. You'll have more energy. You'll think clearer. And um, your liver will thank you. You know, we can't, we can't burn fat. 
Um, and we're all about burning fat when your liver is congested. Um, so we need to be mindful and aware and, and paying attention to the types of foods that we're eating to maintain that balance. Mm -hmm. Because when the liver has less toxic load, then your body is going to process and you'll be able to tap into fat, fat burning mode more easily. Okay. Into ketosis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I want to share with you guys, and I, I said this to Connie before we hopped on, I was not always <laughs> this motivated about a healthy diet. I used to make fun of what I called the granola crowd. Yeah. I truly, I used to eye roll. I was obnoxious. It was like, you know, enough, hand me the Doritos. You know, yeah. I don't want to hear. That's how I used to be. And I think it was almost the arrogance of youth. And because I had come into my 50s fairly active and fairly fit, yeah. that it wasn't until my body started getting a little bit older and I started looking in the mirror and saying, what the heck's going on? that I started educating myself and every piece of information that I got made me more aware and made me want a little bit more information because I could see how things were improving. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my channel this Sunday, I've got a video coming up that's going to be showing you pictures of me five years ago yeah. where I look 10 years older than I look now and a whole lot less healthy. And show up and watch those pictures because the only difference is lifestyle changes. I'm not running to the doctor to get Botox. I'm not running to get my stomach stapled. I'm not did it. It's all lifestyle changes and all affordable lifestyle changes. And I wanna make the point, this bacon fat, this is what I fry foods in or I cook when I'm gonna eat something or cook something at a high heat, I use bacon fat. If I'm going to fry a steak, I'll cook down a little bit of bacon fat. Mm -hmm. This cost me nothing because I just poured it out of the pan that I cooked my bacon in. Exactly. So if we talk about, oh, it's so expensive to eat healthy, well, no, it's not. You buy a pound of bacon <laughs> and you've got your, your cooking oil yeah. right here. And you want to talk about good flavor? Yeah. You could cook toenail clippings in bacon. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> They would, be, they would be delicious. That's an exaggeration, but you get my point. What I wanted to say, what the point I really want to make is that I was the obnoxious person in the room about healthy eating. I really was because I didn't know. I had a lot less information than I had today. And the thing is, is that I was able to completely change my position and my point of view based on more information. So there's nothing that's going to hurt from really educating yourself. And you know what? You're going to feel so much better. And Connie, bless her heart, when I first contacted or Connie first contacted me and we started talking, all I did the first few conversations was whine. Whine and complain about why I looked like I looked, why I was heavy, why I didn't feel good. And she patiently listened, and she was very gentle. She's much more gentle than I would ever be. I'd be like, snap out of it, stop with the sea dolls, call me in a week, you know, enough of it. I would not be as gentle as she is. I would, good thing I've got in her profession. <laughs> but the point is, is that the reason I kept going is because I kept feeling better. And now I am almost radicalized to the opposite point of view. Not, I don't look at it as a granola crowd anymore. And it was a very derogatory term. It was very rude of me and obnoxious. I'm admitting it. What I see now is our food system is a poisoned food system. Our food supply is sad and terrible. And, you know, we all think that the U.S. is leading the world and everything. Well, we're not. We're like the 50th country for health outcomes. Yeah. And after Bangladesh, <laughs> I mean... We think we are have it so nailed, but the fact is, is that our food supply is just littered with poisons. And one of the things that we can do right now to really improve our health and improve our fitness, to improve the way we look and improve the way we feel, is to get those seed oils out of our diet. So, Connie, can you lay down one more time the ones we want to look for? So it's like it's almost easier to go for the ones we, are, we know are good 
because the ones that are not good, they're they're all the orange, the, all the yellow ones in that whole line of death right. in that aisle in the grocery right. store. So what ones would you really recommend? Okay, you want to do extra virgin olive oil and um, make sure it is from a, you know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they can cut all, olive oil with canola oil and that's that's horrific because they're not they're not mandated to label it mm -hmm. um and that's just wrong but extra virgin olive oil that's almost grassy tasting is is wonderful and, and it's, it's so good delicious right mm -hmm. the avocado oil is a little more um bland let's say it, it's it, it it's unflavored if you will and that is supposedly high smoke point so you can cook with that help safely coconut oil um and i feel like co any coconut oil is going to be okay um there's the you know the unfiltered that tastes a little like, like coconut and then there's the more filtered and that's a little more neutralized let me put it that way um those are the seed oils that that i think are fine. Um, the ones we want to avoid are canola, rapeseed, which is the canola seed, because canola is not a seed. It's a, it, it's a, it's a name for Canada oil. Um, and the rapeseed is the actual thing, the, the, the seed. Um, there's cottonseed oil, there's soybean oil, there's safflower oil, which has been mis- you know, labeled as more healthy. It's not. It's not. Um, the sunflower oil, again, you know, people say, well, there's nothing wrong with sunflower oil, but no, nah, it, it's not good. Now, the cold pressed oils, those are different. They, maybe you, you get a cold pressed almond oil or a cold pressed walnut oil or a flax oil. You know, those, those that you store in the refrigerator are fine and but they are not designed for heat those are to be poured on food after you cook it and that's perfectly fine mm -hmm. um, and then all of the animal oils um the butter the the tallow the the schmaltz the um suet the lard those mm -hmm. are also okay mm -hmm. um and then we have to worry about what are they feeding the animals and you know so mm -hmm. Ah, it's you know someone asked about does the bacon need to be nitrate free well i'll tell you i get my bacon from grass-fed grass-finished right. right. um, and i ordered online i did a whole video on it you guys can go over the channel and find it there and that's the lard that yeah. um, i use to cook with so yeah. i know that that is a healthy meat exactly that's throwing off that healthy fat and ladies here's a little tip when you're pushing your cart, you know, down the danger zone of the grocery store, which is any of the aisles, you want to stick to the outside mostly or just don't go yeah. in there at all. Right. But when you're pushing your cart down and you see that whole that whole line of yellow oils, think in your mind, machine lubricant. Yeah. That's what that really is. It was repackaged and sold under false pretenses as a food. It's not a food. It will, it will cause damage to your body because it's not meant to be in your body. Right. It's meant to lubricate machinery. Yeah. So also the, the, the regular, you know, bacon, I'm going to say the bacon, bacon fat is going to be better and more stable than the corn oil. I don't care what kind of bacon you buy. Even if it's even if it's been treated, it's going to be a better choice if you okay. can't get your hands on the grass fed, grass finished. Yes, I mean obviously we buy the best that we can afford, and mm -hmm. but don't don't say well forget it I can't do it. I would highly suggest you know use use bacon any way you can get it. It's it's a because of the stability of the molecule in the saturated fat. That's that's why it's important. Okay. Okay. So if we're, tell us again what you do. If we're going to be going out to a restaurant, I take my eye on. You can do that. Because I'd rather just 
You know, yeah. it's like I'd rather just not stress while I'm eating, you know, that I have a little foundation. So what do you do? You take omega threes. I'll do I'll I'll just in well, I will yeah, I'll take more omega threes and um just appreciate that it, it's all about balance. Yeah. And I'm not going to freak out if I'm going to order French fries and enjoy them um, once in a while, 20% of the time, let's say, you know, the 80, 20 rule. Right. It's important to have, you know, balance in all yeah. of it okay. and moderation. So, yeah. yeah, but, but we can, the insurance of the ion biome, amazing because it's going to reduce inflammation and, and, and create a better environment in the body. And then, uh, you know, do the more omega-3 or a cod liver oil or, you know, something like that. If you're going to, um, um, I mean, the, the, the mayonnaise, I mean, I, I will admit I love best food mayonnaise. I mean, the flavor of it, I grew up on it. I, I just love it. But I will, if I do ever use it, I will add olive oil to it. So yeah. like little, so, so there's little tricks and, and tips yeah. you can, you can play with to just balance things. Right. Yeah. Okay. You brought up best foods mayonnaise, <laughs> which is there anyone our age that doesn't have extremely happy childhood memories of best exactly. foods mayonnaise? I mean, fried egg sandwiches, tomato oh sandwiches gosh. with best foods mayonnaise. Yes. And yes. Yeah. Here's what finally... I finally walked away from the best foods. Yeah. Not only does it have seed oil in it, oh, it's, it's okay. now made with genetically modified ingredients. They're all the seed oils are genetically modified, so we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I get the, um, I get it from Thrive Market. Yes, I, I forget the, the brand. That's what I do. Yeah, it, and it, I'm fine. Yes, <laughs> I know it is. It's it's much better. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and another thing I want to tell you, and I'm going to confess to Connie in front of you guys because she can't yell at me too much right now, but, you know, everything in moderation. Yeah. If the majority of what we're doing day in and day out is helpful, is clean, is good, is supporting our body, you know, that other, the times that we do go out with friends and this and that. And Connie told me at the very beginning when I, she started helping me with my get fit, get healthy journey, she said, one day a week, you can eat whatever you want, you know, within moderation, she said, and one day a week, fast. And so I absolutely do the first, and I never do the second. <laughs> <laughs> so I do one day a week, I just eat what I want. And yeah. it's always within moderation. In other words, I don't buy a box of ho-hos or Twinkies. And, yeah. You know, I would be sick. I would be in bed the next day. Right. But there is one day a week that I'll just go ahead and have what I want. And then it's right back in, and that works fine. I don't know if I'll ever move up to the big girl fasting one day a week, but I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's it is you're doing great, and it, I too um, am able to maintain my you know my fitness level, my my anti aging. You know, <laughs> I, I'm I'm all about longevity. And, and I want to feel as good in my body as humanly possible. And I'm going to do everything in my power mm -hmm. to hack that and, and, yeah. and make it so because it's fun, in my opinion. I, I really, yeah. really love, you know, the whole journey. Um, but, of course, I'm going to go out to eat and I'm going to eat things that I know are, are extremely unhealthy. But you just, we, we, we're resilient. We can, yeah. we can heal and, and there's no, I mean, there's no time like the present to, to, to get, get on it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's never too late. Yeah. And you will never regret it. Oh my I mean, God. I look back now. I will not go back to where I was. No. You just will never regret it. And, and I did not shoot out of the gate. So don't, don't think guys that you have to you know, ladies, that you have to wake up and do everything perfect. You don't. I just added a little something, you know, every time I was ready. So I'd add a little bit more. And once I got used to that, I'd add a little bit more. So I don't want you to think it's overwhelming and I can't do it. And here's another thing that I was thinking about, Patty, you'll get this. We were the generation 
that rode our bikes with no helmets, that drank from the hose, that went out in the morning and were told to come back when the streetlights come on. Yes. We are tough. Yeah. We created the concerts. We created, you know, it's like we had yeah. an incredible start in this world. And you know what? I want us to be radical and fun and feisty and fit as we get older. So we are the tough generation. We can do this. We can be fit. We can be energetic. We can feel great. We can really age in a way that sets a different precedent than just getting fluffy and stove up and can't move. And this. let's not do that. Let's do it a different way. Let's do it in an energetic, fun, feisty, interested, engaged in the world way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Honey, thank you so much. I learned so much today. I'm going to go and order some omega-3s. <laughs> you, could, you could do, uh, you know, krill oil. You could do squid. You could do omega. Yeah. Uh, it, it, there's so many. Really what about flaxseed? Flaxseed's great. A lot of us. That's that in the cupboard. Yeah, that's wonderful. But a lot of us don't convert. We don't have the enzyme to convert flax into omega-3. But it certainly is healthy oil. So okay. absolutely. Yeah. Great. All yeah. right. So tell us again how we can find you, Connie. I know you're on YouTube again. I'm on YouTube. Uh, and thank you for kind of the nudge because I wouldn't have done it without without your uh, support. Um, ConnieRutledge.com is my website. I highly encourage you, if you have questions, um, get in touch. I've got a jumpstart session that is really a game changer for many women. I hear so many good things because again, you know, we, we need, we, we've been sold a bill of goods. We've starved ourselves. We've just been, you know, on the wrong path in listening to um, information that's antiquated that we thought maybe, maybe we thought it was right at one point because, you know, things evolve. Um, but but I'll, I'll, I'll set you straight. I'll give you tips and tricks and doable um, things that will definitely be something that you can incorporate without, uh, you know, a lot of effort. Um, and you'll feel better right away. Yeah. So. I encourage you to just, um, it, you know, listen to the YouTube and 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 start start feeling better. You deserve to feel better. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, let's let's blast through our sixties and into our seventies and be the tigers that they can't take. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> All right, Connie, thank you so much. This was so informative for me. I learned so much, and I really wanted to do this because I wanted to learn more about the topic, and I wanted to make sure that you guys had the information. Will you come back and see us again sometime? I would love that. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And everyone, thank you so much for showing up. Share this show yeah. with your friends. We yeah. need to get the word out because I am tired of people getting the wrong information and thinking that they're doing something healthy when they're really not. Specific, especially because it's just making someone money. That's the only reason that really yeah. bothers me. Yeah. So share this show with your friends. Make sure you click the like button if you found it useful and helpful. And we will see you in the next video. Connie, I can't wait for you to come back again. All right. Thanks, Kimberly. Take Bye -bye. care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.